Hello, everybody. We are announcing the October Art Dare, and we are showing featured entries from the August Art Dare. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof. Critiques, tutorials, professional development, and workshops. The August Art Dare was to create an underwater creature and or scene. And the first artist we're going to take a look at is Samuel. And Samuel talks about the ocean's midnight zone, which is a part of the ocean that remains unexplored. And it's a place with weird creatures, bioluminescence, in different ways to survive. So Samuel used paper, chalk pastel, pastel inks. And Samuel did quite a few pieces. So we see some works in progress here. What do you think about the black background, Jordan? Uh, I love that idea for this type of project when you're creating creatures that have bioluminescence or glowing. And I think that the ultimate way you can show something glowing is by having everything around them dark. And so I think it makes it a really easy solution for you to create this uh, and make things really pop. So I think that was a really smart decision on your part. I think Samuel really captured the bioluminescence. I mean, I really feel the glow looking at this composition and really captured the transparency because that's such a distinct quality of creatures that are in the deep sea. The oranges and blues, they're so vibrant. So great job, Samuel. I think you really captured the qualities that you were talking about. Next artist is Gigi Trong. Sorry if I said that incorrect. And this is Gigi's first art dare. And Gigi started with a picture of a jellyfish. Explains, I thought it looked grand and beautiful. And so Gigi wanted to put a small boy looking up at it in awe in an aquarium. And you know something, Gigi doesn't use watercolors that often, but ended up using them quite a bit for this art dare. So we have a bunch of sketches, fish and pencil, wonderful thumbnails. I mean, aren't these great? Yeah, there's a huge variety. I'm seeing different uh, different types of materials for the, or the, uh, for the pens and for the for using markers, using pencil and using watercolor, which you said you didn't normally do. So I think that's really great that you're trying new things out. And we see here earlier, this is, I think, a digital collage that Gigi put together as a reference. And I, I love the checklist, Gigi. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, and then I do we it myself have, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, me too. And what a lovely sense of scale. I mean, it really does look like this majestic creature and the little person at the bottom that really pushes the sense of scale and the brushwork is so well done. I mean, like, I love the very thin lines in the top part. And then everything gets very flowy and organic towards the bottom. A Scarf and Tea says, what a beautiful piece. And that planning is inspiring. Minette says, love the scale of the jellyfish to the child and seeing the process photos. All right. Next artist is Marley's. And Marley's talks about to the picture fish at the bottom of the lake fish in the water is always good but it should be a challenge using pencils and watercolor second image is lots going on at the reef in acryl gouache and wow so many materials painted directly on a foil pressed it on the can can saw that in max ernst's work so let's take a look at marley's work and again we have more works in progress and Jordan, I'm so glad people share these. I love seeing process photos. Anyone who knows me knows I love watching the behind the scenes stuff for like animated movies and just seeing the thought process of how someone works. And I think that's really, really great that you're showing here because it get, helps us get into your mind and seeing how something started with a blank canvas or a blank piece of paper and something that is a work of art. I really love that. And this one is so different stylistically than the linoleum block, which was really graphic and really about blunt shapes. And I just love how impressionistic this view is. The image has this, I think, almost smeary quality 
that to me really matches the movement that you might be seeing underground. It's a really well-constructed scene. We get the feeling of the corals, but then the really simple blue background, I think is very, very helpful because otherwise I think it would get too busy. So that's a really nice balance, Marley's, that you put together. All right. Next artist is Elvera, who is live with us here in the chat. We love it when people are able to do that. And Elvera talks about, I often feel overwhelmed due to the disease I have. It feels like emotional drowning. And there's a continuous desire to get out of the water. Maybe I should just undergo morphosis and become an underwater creature <laughs> who is comfortable and happy. And so Alvera says, I've mixed myself with a lionfish. And another one is a fictional creature with many arms that can swim fast. So let's take mm -hmm. a look at many variations of this. And Jordan, I think that's a really powerful statement. Yeah, I think um, I think just having that variety in, in your work and, that, uh, and you wanting to try so many different things during the planning stage is really helping you out. And uh, it's creating uh, creating something very unique. I think it's allowing you to not just focus on a cliche version of um, something that could be seen underwater. And, uh, and this right here, oh wow! This I don't think I've ever seen this one. This is fascinating. <laughs> I love it. Wow! Yeah, yeah. I love the way your mind works. This is so fun, and I love that you're just taking risks. You're taking so many chances. It's it's amazing. Marlies, I'm so glad you're here live with us in the chat. So if you're an artist that we're featuring, please speak up because we love showing you off. <laughs> and wow, I, I cannot believe that we're going from these 3D models to these very painterly, very textured scenes. I mean, I think a lot of people don't do both. 3D modeling and painting. And isn't this just so fun? <laughs> it is very fun, very fascinating. I love how you have like these these fins that turn into hands slowly over time. Um, and and it, it raises so many fun questions. Like how is this creature swimming? How is, you know, how are they alive? How are they <laughs> functioning? Like, I just want to know these things now. And you've opened up a door of, of many possibilities. <laughs> Ravine says, love the textures. Shannon says, first one is very evocative. And Seven Angelic says, I like this thought process. Holy cow, that model, this is amazing. <laughs> Great. Okay, next artist is Jackie. And Jackie says, I'm trying to improve my acrylic painting skills and the dares are an amazing outlet for learning and experimenting. And so Jackie, I guess, saw a series on deep sea creatures I watched, but also I was a really young, a page of deep sea creatures from a children's encyclopedia, specifically the anglerfish. They are so ugly. They are beautiful. <laughs> you also know so that in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one, I was making a statement about instance, the unsustainable consumption of sea life by humans the way humans abuse reefs and seabeds for their entertainment what do you think of this anglerfish i i always love anglerfish there's something about that was pointed out so creepy but also so awesome at the same time i think my favorite part about it is how you're using the color confidence the orange and blue to make them really stand out from each other and the fish just straight up looks frightening like those teeth are very ferocious they're very sharp um i would not want to get caught in the middle of that and uh yeah I, I love it i think you did a great job and this one is really making me laugh because it's like the teeth look like shark teeth but they're mm. on a person and this person just looks really ferocious like i don't want to be near them at all but then I also really like the playful bubbles, the way they're moving upwards. They look nice and squishy. They look transparent. And so, Jackie, this is just a wonderful character that you've invented. And then the simple blue background with the slight gradients going down 
is really wonderful. Amanda says, always imagine deep sea creatures are way bigger than what they are. Yeah, actually, they're really, really small, which is sort of surprising because you see these epic photographs of them. And it's, it's just always something that you don't think of. Blended Burger Soup says that anglerfish is horrifyingly beautiful. Well, it sounds like <laughs> you nailed your goal, Jackie. Excellent. Next artist is Ravine, and I believe Ravine is here live with us in the chat. So lovely to have you here. And Ravine says, been exploring in my work small moments and the environments that create them. And I wanted to capture an intimate moment of a girl showing her cat a koi fish. I think of underwater creatures as so mysterious. This piece plays with the idea that we are just as elusive at them. All right, we have some work in progress. So you can see the various stages. What's your take, Jordan? Uh, I think this is a really fun interpretation of this image. I think this is the first one we've seen so far where it's like not taking place underwater, but the theme around or surrounding the character is all underwater. You're observing these creatures. And um, I really think it's fascinating. I especially love uh, some of the fish that are outside of these tanks. Um, and just as a story, I think it's really fascinating. I'm really engaged in what's happening in this piece. Oh, I think it's such an ambitious composition. And I, I think you're right. Like we have the contained jellyfish but then there's a whole other world of the koi fish that's being created. And actually in the top upper right, I almost feel like that could be an indication of part of a lid or I don't know. I, I could almost see that maybe she's inside a jar as well. Mm -hmm. And then there's the jar with the jellyfish inside. Yeah. And what beautiful luminous colors. Yeah, the colors are definitely draw me in, especially with the that koi fish in the middle. I think that one's probably my favorite. But I think you're also doing really well with the jellyfish, the lighting in the back, the um, the rim light on the hair on the right side. There's a lot of really great moments in this. And beautiful work in the painting of the skin, showing some of the musculature. I mean, I could feel that hand in the plumpness of the cat. I just think <laughs> that is the funniest thing. Carolyn says, I love the story in this. And Karasu says, this is one of the most bizarre sets of art dare entries I've seen, but there's so much creativity. And we also have a scarf and tea who says, gorgeous work, Ravine. Next artist is Helen. Helen says, went to the beach, had a brainstorming day. And the motivation was just be fun. Fish are painted on the canvas I've been using for leftover acrylic paint. And the pattern I had inspired the rest of the work. Hopefully they make you smile. Well, check these out because there are several here by Helen. And what a range. I love that. Uh, especially just the, the difference between that and the image we just saw in this one are two totally, they feel like they're created by two totally different artists. And um, I, I would not expect that to be the case. So I love your variety, your, uh, your changes in storytelling, your compositions, they all look completely different. And I love that you're taking as many risks as possible in just those three images. Is that a thing of fries on the left? That's what I thought it was. It yeah. It just cracks me up. It's, it's like, I don't think fries would taste very good underwater. <laughs> like, it feels soggy. It's just really uh, funny. Well, they got them in SpongeBob, so clearly, I mean... It That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, they're <laughs> cooking hamburgers in SpongeBob under yep. the water. Mm. Oh! <laughs> Seven of Chocolate's Fish and Chips. Thank you. I totally missed that. That is so funny. <laughs> Manette says, what a beautiful variety of pieces, such great textures. Yeah, look at this. We can see all three of them together. Yeah. And they're such a beautiful set. They are each different, but they're all related. And, and how fun it is to create those three pieces together. 
Next artist is Marie, and we have some 3D stuff. Marie says, I tried to challenge myself, go outside of my comfort zone. I want to create a sense of depth and dimension to the piece. That's when I came to the idea to use octopus tentacles to give my artwork a vibrant and lively touch. So we have some initial sketches in pencil. And look at these tentacles <laughs> that are going outside of the frame. Oh, that's excellent. I think it looks really, really good. And um, I mean, you pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, I think really pay rich dividends because this is so fascinating to look at. Just the tentacles kind of sprawling out outside of the frame. Uh, you have a really nice uh, like helmet that you that you create. And I love that you're using the green for the rusting and all that. Um, and I, I really like this. And just the eye, the giant eye <laughs> that's yeah. inside the suit itself. It kind of reminds me of, I think the very first episode of Scooby-Doo had a villain that looked something like that. So I'm just thinking of like the mystery machine and all that. It's great. It's really great. I just am so in love with those suction cuffs. Like, do you see how there's these little divots that mm -hmm. make the suction cuffs very distinct from each other? It's like those little yeah. details really make a difference. And I love, Marie, that you spent time modeling the frame because sometimes when people put frames, they don't invest a lot of time into that, but it has this really nice ornate quality that just makes it even funnier to me because it's like this pretty frame and the octopus is going like, bleh, like all over the whole thing. It's fantastic. And here we have, again, I believe some of the work in progress. All right, next artist is Paul. Paul talks about the art there is a chance to be looser and quicker with watercolor. And he used watercolor to capture the textures and sensations of being in or near the water and used bloom, salt, and additional layers to enhance the sense of a watery world. What do you think, Jordan? We have several here from Paul. Ooh, no, I really like this. That penguin actually in the top left uh, is really <laughs> fascinating to me. And I think I think one of the reasons is because the pink that's used. I really, really enjoy seeing that because it feels warm. It feels like golden hour or, or sunset time or something like that, or maybe even dawn. But uh, it's just very, very beautiful. I love how that's looking. The tentacles also have a mixture of oranges and reds and blues. And I think the idea of, that you're trying to get across of just water communicating water creatures is really strong for this and so fun to see the penguins actually placed into a landscape because we have the really dark one the lower left and the small ones really nice job on your atmospheric perspective paul <laughs> i definitely approve of that approach we also have an octopus here much brighter more vibrant saturated colors and we have a seal beautiful sense of lighting. I mean, I can see the glow that you would expect to happen underwater. And what do you think about this one? I really like this one a lot. I love the kind of, I guess they're uh, the eyes. I don't know what the name of this creature is, unfortunately. Someone get in the comments to let me know. But the, the shape of what I turn to be the eyes, I really love how that's being mixed together. It feels like a whole other galaxy. And they're like, you ever, you ever watch Men in Black, Clara? Yeah, of course. That's the very first one. Okay, you know how the, the, the cat has that little um, thing on its collar where it's like the whole universe inside of it? Oh, yeah! <laughs> you know, that, that's, what, that's what that reminds me of. It just looks like there's a whole galaxy inside there. Uh, I really love that. All right, the next artist is Christine, who is here live with us in the chat. Christine says... They hopped down to my local library, perused all the books with ocean creatures. And the yin yang composition was something I wanted to try, but didn't want the end result to be too stiff. Line work was so enjoyable as sea creatures come in such a huge variety of textures. So we can see this one, which is more of a rectangular composition. And I can't believe this is marker. Wow. That is incredible. <laughs> I've never, I've never been able to make marker look like that. Um, the 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 green just feels so. I just feel the texture even from here. 
and uh, like it makes you just want to go like, oh, this is fuzzy, you know. So I think he did a really amazing job with that. And I also really love the details of the scales and the little um, the little dots on the, uh, the fins on the fish on the left. Really, really beautiful stuff. And guess what? Christine didn't stop there. <laughs> this is also oh marker, and I'm like. How? Like, it, it's just wow. extraordinary, the marker technique. And then how cool that Christine stuck with this circular composition, which then got translated. I mean, I feel like here you can more see the marker technique. I feel like from a distance, it's a little bit tougher. But wow, the amount of effort that went into making these pieces is epic. We've got some prizes to give out. Honorable mention goes to Elvira, and the prize goes to Ravine. Congratulations, everybody. We're so proud of all the work you do, and we're so happy to be able to show you all off to the rest of the world. October Art Dare is Fall Harvest. Because guess what? There's just so many cute pumpkins and gourds <laughs> that go around here. And they're tasty. Uh, and there's pumpkin pie. I love eating pumpkin pie for breakfast. Do you ever do that, Jordan? I have been known to do that on occasion. <laughs> and I love the topic of pumpkins, gourds, squash, whatever it is you want to talk about. Because they can actually be wonderful symbols, like in Cinderella. But you can also think about it as, yes, literal fall harvest. And there's the Horde of Plenty, Cornucopia, which is another symbol. And what about Nightmare Before Christmas, Jordan? Ah, uh, yes. The famous Nightmare Before Christmas, the Halloween theme. I think everyone or most people tend to love spooky season, especially who are artists, because it's the time to be creative. So for those of you who are itching to do that, this is your time to shine. And it kind of cracks me up because pumpkins could be really scary and creepy, but they can be super cute and mm -hmm. cartoon-like. And if some of you want to get your pumpkins and start carving them for the art dare, that is another way to go about doing it. I love this pencil drawn. Yeah. Antonio Lopez Garcia is a whole bunch of gourds in one place. Sometimes they show up in still life paintings and sometimes in cartoons. I mean, they look more like basketballs to me. That's okay. We, we know what it is. We love Charlie Brown. That, that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> that Who grew beautiful. up with this special? I'm old enough that it was on network TV and every year we could only watch it once. Like, you kids don't know how good you have it with all your streaming services. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we don't know anything else. <laughs> so we have the cute pumpkins, but what about this a pumpkin in a Chinese painting? I think that's great. I mean, the, the thing that I noticed about all the things that you've shown so far is they're all different cultures, all different time periods, all different contexts of the same type of thing. And I think that using that to your advantage in in art there or any art piece is always going to work for you because it'll make you stand out. It'll make your work more unique. And it adds a personal flair to it that you can't really duplicate easily. Okay, good. Carolyn, Seven Angelic, and Shannon both remember what that was like. <laughs> also, along with the pumpkins, if some of you have gourds, I mean, there's a whole tradition of artwork, sculptures being made from gourds. So if that's something you have access to, that might be super fun. I have no idea how that works. Or <laughs> this is not a gourd, but it's inspired by a gourd. What do you think of that? I think that's awesome. It, it, it just feels like a really beautiful vase, but I could totally see the inspiration of the gourd coming in here. And uh, I, I think it's really cool when you can think of things that way, when you can there's an artist I really like, and he'll take household objects like an ice cream scoop and he'll turn it into a spaceship uh, in his concept art. And this kind of reminds me of that. It's really, really fun seeing how you can turn one thing to the other. It's very broad. You guys can interpret it however you want. 
And we have some comments. Lisa says, my local museum has a special exhibit with Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas models. They're fragile. And oh, how fun. Manette says, my mom makes birdhouses out of gourds. Wow, how does that actually <laughs> work? <Wow. coughs> Karasu says, hopefully I'll have the spoons to create something this month. Do you carve your own jack-o'-lantern, Jordan? No, I, I personally am not much of a Halloween guy. I've done it before and when I was a kid and it was fun, but I haven't done it in a long, long time. I admire them, though. I can admire them when I was walking by them on the street. And, um, and there was one time I actually painted a Spider-Man face on a pumpkin. Um, it was, that of was course. <laughs> yep. Oh I was a teenager. I was like 16. I was like, this is going to be cool. This is going to be cool. <laughs> I'm curious. Do people have Halloween traditions, things you do every year? Because my family's tradition is my spouse makes these absurdly complicated costumes for my kids. As in, he'll make a 3D model in Maya and then he'll cut a pattern for the outfit. And he'll just work on it for weeks. Like we get started really early and he'll like stay up all night for three consecutive days. It's really, really crazy. So <laughs> tell That's us in amazing. the chat. Yeah. If you guys have a Halloween tradition, we have the Art Dare Leap as always. If some of you want to spend a little bit more time, do something a bit more ambitious. The Art Dare Leap is to create four different artworks. You can see there's a huge range of options for how you can tackle that. Hang out in the Discord. Share what you're making throughout the month. It is so fun to hang out in there, get inspiration, get support. I love watching all the progress throughout the entire month. To officially enter, you want to tag us on Instagram. Use hashtag ArtProfDare. But if you are not on social media, all you need to do is go to our website, click on Art Dares in the menu bar. And if you scroll down on the Art Dare page, you can see we do have a Google form. So you can use that as well to submit. What's happening tonight, Jordan? Tonight on my YouTube channel, The Joe McBo Show, we are doing a third stream with this character. We're going to be coloring him and maybe even starting a turnaround. So it's going to be tonight, 6 p.m. Pacific. You guys don't want to miss it. October workshops. Registration is open. It is due this Friday. Drawing dogs, pumpkins and gourds, skeletons and bones, commissions, social media, and merch and prints. This is where you get to work with me in real time. And I love, it's one of my favorite things. It's sort of like the dessert after I do all the administrative crap. So I'm so happy to have these chances to work with all of you. If you want to register, go to artprof.org. Join our art school portfolios group. So many kids work on their portfolios totally by themselves and so frustrating. If you join this group, you get to work with other applicants. You get voice sessions, critiques, and support from us. And there's no pressure to post all the time. You just post whenever you want. And we already are doing great work in there with people in those groups. So take a look at that. ArtProf has services, artist calls, personal art curriculum, statement editing, portfolio critiques. Please join us. Oops, this is the wrong slide. <laughs> I was going to tell you guys, we're having a Discord stage session. My apologies. So if you want to speak to Jordan and I on voice, go to the Discord and click on the post live stream stage channel. And we love getting to hear all your voices. Thank you to our top wonderful Patreon supporters who make everything possible here at ArtProf. Hang out on our website, use the search bar to find whatever it is you want. Art Prof has a podcast that's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And subscribe to our channel for more tutorials, critiques, and business tips. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.